It's the Super Bowl of sailing, and now it's getting a total makeover. Oracle CEO Larry Ellison won the last America's Cup race back in 2010, and as the champ, he gets to set the rules for this year's competition. That's like the power of the purse, right? Or the golden rule, he with the gold rules. Well, the Tech Titan has three requirements. Here you go, faster, bigger, and closer to home. So joining us now, the men that are meant to make uh, Ellison's vision a reality, James Spittle, Oracle Team USA Helmsman, the guy who drives the boat, and Stephen Barkley, America's Cup Event Authority CEO. James, I understand uh, bigger and closer to home. The tricky part, how do you make it go faster? Well, that's, that's the question. Something we're trying to do right now. These boats are quite a lot different than the past America's Cup class boats that are over 50 miles an hour on the water. They completely hydrofoil out of the 50 water. 50 miles an hour on wind. On wind, and they can do more than twice the speed of the wind. They're so efficient. And the latest thing you're seeing now in a lot of these pictures is hydrofoiling. So we have a big wing, but now they'll completely lift They're up out of the water. Of, and that helps to achieve more speed. Yeah, it basically eliminates drag. When a boat goes through the water, it has a drag from the hull. So if you can foil it out of the water, like you're seeing now on those I mean, tiny the whole little thing foils, is, is out. The whole thing. So it's the latest thing in America's Cup racing. Absolutely wild. Now, uh, you have been nicknamed in the Italian press. Uh, your name is James Spittle. They call you uh, James Pitbull because you're aggressive. I mean, what's it like to actually drive this thing? It's exhilarating. I mean, it's demanding. It pushes you as an athlete, but incredibly rewarding. And especially being on the San Francisco Bay, I mean, it really is the ultimate battleground for us as sailors. Why? Because. It's always changing. I mean, anyone that's been to San Francisco in the summer, it's incredibly windy. The currents are very difficult. There's the fog. You've got Alcatraz. We're right in between Alcatraz and the Golden Gate Bridge, right near the downtown. It's just like a, a mountain climber as Everest is to him, the full-on the full challenge for us. San Francisco Bay is the ultimate. And, of course, Stephen, uh, your job is to make sure people are fired up and they're attending. You can actually do that. It's no longer 20 miles offshore, right? No, so absolutely. that's a big part of the plan. It's, uh, we brought the racing right in close to shore. Thousands of people uh, lining the shore last year in our pre-events, and we accept, uh, expect the same thing this year. And uh, there's, what, now a 9,000-person uh, stadium, in effect? Yes, so we've, got a, uh, we've got a 9,000-seat pavilion stadium, temporary one. We've had three concerts already, all sold out. Uh, promises to be pretty exciting through the summer. And it, no, go ahead. No, well, I, you know, I, I grew up sailing uh, a uh, sunfish, all, uh, all uh, eight and a half uh, feet of her. Uh, but how do you get people fired up about sailing who, who haven't sailed before? What's, what's, what's the draw? Well, that's exactly what, what we've been focusing on, both in terms of television and putting the graphics on top of live pictures, so now a general sports person can understand it. Think about a chess board, take away the, take a, take about a chess game, take away the board, now put the board on, on, on top of it. That's what we've been able to do with our graphics. People now understand sailing. And then, and then bring the sailing right in close to shore, and all of a sudden you have a, a the, an amphitheater like at a football stadium. You hear the people... Uh, uh, cheering and chanting, etc., etc. They can almost hear the sailors. Um, let, you know, let me ask back to these new boats for a moment. Uh, what's the cost to, to build one of these? The cost of a boat is around about eight million uh, American dollars. Eight million. Hmm. And there's been some uh, some fears, some concerns about the safety of the boats as well. Um, how do you balance speed with safety? Well, I think in any sport and anything in life, it's very difficult to eliminate risk. You know, there's always risk in what you do. We've obviously been through, we're learning all the time in these boats. We've now been through a safety review panel during this process. We've made them safer, the sailors safer. You can never eliminate risk or in our terms a capsize, but what you can do is make it for the sailors in the event that that happens, and that's what we've done. Well, sadly, uh, we, uh, we lost a member of the sport um, just a couple of months ago, actually. and. Um, you're now what wearing helmets and uh, and of course there 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 was the accident one of one of the helms in was uh, under the Swedish boat uh, trapped under there and uh, and drowned. It was it was a tough day for everyone. I mean it's such a tight knit community. Andrew Simpson was one of the world's best sailors, Olympic medalist. After this tragedy, the event has put together an expert safety panel. They've come out with 37 safety recommendations. The United States Coast Guard has now endorsed these. The teams have all cooperated together on this, and now you'll see the sailors. We're carrying spare air, we've got harnesses, we've got helmets, communication systems. It's not what people think when they think of a sailor. If they right. see these guys dressed, it's a cross between a motocross rider and an NFL linebacker. It really is a, uh, a, you know, a, 
all those preconceived ideas go out the window now. It's, it's a new well, game. Well, you changed the rules with these new boats. Um, what's it like to be an Aussie and actually competing against Aussies on an American team? That's fantastic. I'll tell you what. Is one, it? Seriously? It is. I mean, you're, not get, you're not getting flack from your fellow Aussies saying, Man, come on, I, mate, what are you doing? I'll tell you what. San Francisco is the greatest city, and I'll tell you why, because it gets behind its home teams. If you look at the Giants, if you look at the Warriors, not all the players are from San Francisco. Not all the players are from America, but I'll tell you what, they accept them as they are, they're as their own, and they really get behind them. And for me personally, I mean, I'm just honoured to be part of the city. I love it. I've fallen in love with it. Does Larry spend much time with you guys on the boat? Larry does a lot of sailing. He's naturally uh, a competitor, really loves competing. We've competed against each other, with each other, and uh, yeah, he's, he's a good sailor. And Stephen, for, uh, for people who want to tune in, it starts this week. Give us a lay of the land over the next two weeks. Sure, sure. So we've got our opening weekend uh, happening uh, on uh, Friday, uh, and uh, sorry, on Thursday is the opening ceremony. On Friday is the first race, a time trial. First time we'll see all the boats competing together in a time trial. And then on Sunday we have the first of the knockout series to find the challenger that will take on the American team in the final in September. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Who are you most worried about? It's a tough call. I mean, the New Zealand team's probably been together the longest, over a decade, that team, you know. And like any team sport, it's hard to shortcut that sort of time spent together. But I tell you what, the Italian team have got a lot of history. The Swedish team bouncing back from the tragedy, you never count out an underdog.